first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio Get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is eight o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and in definite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and in definite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. All right, we back once again. And we're going to be going in tonight into who are the Washington or the Mound Builders. And we're going to get a lot of information in. Before I get started, I'm going to bring on my co-host. Brother L, are you here? Yes, sir. Peace, God. All right, all right. Peace, God. How you doing tonight? Doing very well. Very well. How yourself, brother? All right. You're doing well. How do I sound? Do I sound clear? Sound pretty good, boy. All right, that's good. That's good. All right, we have another special guest coming on tonight, my man, Olabala. He's the brother bringing me up to New York and put me on. Brother Olabala, are you here? Peace, I'm here. Peace, God. Lord, how you doing tonight? Peace and love to the family. All right, peace and love All to right. the family. No doubt. Um, before we yeah. get started, I want to thank you guys, say Washington Beach, which basically means I give the higher self within you. And also in reply, you need the higher self in me. So hence, um, the higher self connects. Um, so let's get into some of this info here. Um, many people don't even know about Washington, and that's why we're doing these particular shows to get more people to the understanding of how severe this thing really is. Um, myself and the delegate of um, Chiefs um, went to with the Empress back in the spring of around May 15th through the 17th, 2004. And she was very active and talkative. And outside of wanting to know our names, the major concern she had was that we read a book, which was in reference to the return of the ancient ones. Of course, mm-hmm. um, I said, yes, ma'am. We read the book. And she said, that's good. They each of us and said, that's good, and that is what you need. So she was telling us that she may not be active as far as being able to um, get around and do the research, over 40 years of research as she had did previously, but we Mm -hmm. have what we need in order to carry on the banner, um, you know, um, as we could say. And um, I also want to give a special shout-out and give honors to um, Joe Frederick, um, Washington, or Washington, um, for 
So basically, you know, just the polite, you know, treatment in which that we received, as well as also the fact that the United States saw at that time period became the first nation state of uh, the Empire of Washington was up the moment. And that was that, um, that particular time period. And the reason why is because my postman teacher, um, Prince Tyrannus, who did the way was the crown prince of the Empire of Washington at the moment, he did that title by the Emperor Berdiasi um, Washington uh, Gaston L. Bay on June 7, 1999. All right? And in 2000, when the FBI was the flop, so, as if that, you know, things could have been helped to get better. And by 2003, he formulated or established as a crown prince can do, based on the definition of his own providence, in which that became known as the United Nations of the Money and more. Um, because we should stay out the empire. And so we followed through with that. And myself, um, in a prince in the United Washington, we wanted to get down to what he wanted and what they was already working on from nineteen ninety uh, from the nineteen nineties and before. Uh, he became a member of the Washington back in nineteen ninety one. All right. Um, so he was Washington for a long time before anyone knew what Washington was. You know, it wasn't until uh, that the body went in and how to H. Y. Day started actually teaching the information for in the Washington. Uh, that came through those two brothers during the mid nineties. And so I did uh props and praise from those two brothers right there to bring that information out. And of course that the body went in, uh, we got a less recipe with brother. Phil Valentine, that was Phil Valentine and Queen of Four in New York City. And Baba gave a shout out and, you know, an update on Brother Bobby Women's condition. And I was told um, by Brother Azariah that Bobby was coming home this week. And, you know, so. What is taking place is that I guess the healing is taking place, and everybody who is sending out energy uh, is working. And I know I did an actual travel, um, and I seen that the body in his spirit near his body, you know, and he conversated with me. And I told him what was going on is that, you know, a lot of people are sending positive energy before the healing can take place, you know. Uh, of course, the church is absorbed if you want to absorb it and add it to the mission. But I can see, of course, you know, for the body, for the band being so, you know, it ain't too much I don't want. But that definitely was something that was supposed to play. And we wanted to get into um, more of this info about who is the Washington because. Uh, many have this speculation, but if you get the book of the day, and it's called the Hieroglyphic Transcript of the Papyrus of the it's translated to English by E.A. Wally Budge. Um, the word Washita is derived from the word Usheta, like Yushet, in which that was a form of Edheru, or Hawthor, as she was known as, Tabor with the Bible, the Egyptian. Mm-hmm. And was identified right. currents of the sky in the north when the sun rose. She is either depicted in the form of a woman, hence the reason why um, the Washington is the matriarch of the society. It says, having upon her head the crown of the north and a scepter round where a serpent is twined, or as a wing. Uraeus, wearing the crown of the north, she was the principal goddess of the crown of Buto in the Delta. The goddess Uishet is the serpent-headed. 
right? Serpent head. That's the symbol of the serpent head. Now, of course, we understand that the woman symbolizes the mother goddess person, which is I.D., the prince of lady. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's like the outward manifestation of the mother goddess person, which is the concentrated personal energy within each and every one of us. So, this goddess of the north symbolizes how this snake has risen up from the south, which is the base of the spine, up towards the north, which is the top of the head, and then, of course, bowling over. Um, since the word Kunta, a bowl, and to what is known as the top of the head, down into the forehead, um, to the area which I can see along the tiaras or the crowns of the so-called Asian Egyptians or Pumetans or Tamaranians. You would see a serpent raised out from that particular area, symbolized that the Kunta lineage has risen. So the word Usheta or Washita symbolizes reaching the epitome of enlightenment. Right? That's what it means. Matter of fact, the word Ushet or Usheta from immoral or immortal uh, or immoral is that the symbol of the Wing Sundays. Now, we've all seen this Wing Sundays. This is similar to what Malachi, the fourth chapter, the second verse speaks about that the son of righteousness will come with killing in his wings. The son with the wings symbolizes the human shepherd and has been used to signify freedom. That's what it's been used for, to signify freedom and expansion. The expansion of the mind, the expansion of soul, the expansion of Ra or Atan, Atan Re. In the Osarian mythology, Heru defeated Set by becoming or Rasheta, or the winged serpent, divinity. In other words, um, this is what it means by Allah and man is one, the same as the 101 or 102 of our lessons. Mm. Right? Thus, it is created by Jehuti, who symbolizes wisdom, that the Ur, Rashet, shall be seen, decorated over every temple as a protection from evil. Now, this mm-hmm. is from the Osarian resurrection myth, Ahapua 176b. Now, in, doc, in Dr. Muwata Ashley's book, it's called The Egyptian Tantric Yoga Guide to Love, Sex, Marriage, Relationships, and Spiritual Enlightenment. He goes on to state that the Ur Heshet is the epitome of the ancient Egyptian Tantric mystical philosophy as it still is today. It is the theme exhibition of the understanding of all encompassing, all persuasive, absolute existence. Therefore, the wings are used by both gods and goddesses of the natural world. In ancient Egyptian mythology, for the supreme deification or divinity encompasses both male and female attributes, all objects they are called complementary. All existence, the state of exogeny. Thus, in order to overcome evil, the concept of opposites, which is duality, it is necessary to discuss the all encompassing, which is the oneness of the higher self. Now, within this understanding, there can be no evil since there is no duality. Mm-hmm. So he's saying that when you reach the or or the or or Washington, or when you reach this level of consciousness, so that's actually what you're talking about. We are physical representation of consciousness. So when we take on the term Washington, we are saying that we physically represent the higher self in karma. And the will of my will becomes the will of is the will of the higher self. In other words, there's only one will. There is no truth. There is no duality at this point. There is no such thing as opposite. You're not looking at things good and bad, right or wrong, agree with this visible. Good at evil. You're not looking at things from that concept any longer. You're looking at everything as it was and forevermore will be. All right? Now, according to M. Nafaro, it's called the memoir, Sir Kikwari Kari. He states that the goddess, Rishet, 
come up from the underworld and would change their faces into things of beauty with mm. I fly up and perch myself upon the forehead of Ra in the bows of his boat, which is in heaven. Now, this is also about your forehead and the um, top of your head. That's the sky. I am the spiritual body of the sustainer of my yacht, which is made by the goddess Oshet. This is what it says. Right? Matter of fact, it goes on. Um, Matter of fact, we're saying acting forward to the biological psychiatry by Dr. Rich King. I think it was another book that he had, and it's called Melanin the Key of Freedom. He said Africans believe that the unlimited power of individual godhood, godhood occurs with one who sees God. That's what this is all talking about. And of course, this is all biblical, because this is found within Genesis in the Old Chapter, um, Old Testament. I think Genesis, the 32nd chapter, the 30th verse, so it says that Tom about Jacob um, called the name of the place Peniel or Penal, for I have seen God fix the faith and my life is preserved. You know, so um, that is talking about when you have seen a rule or God or light, uh, you know, face to face. That's what that is actually talking about. This is what we're talking about within the 101 and 102s. Is it's got these two cells. You have the lower self to symbolize your self, and then you have the higher self to symbolize your table. The higher self does battle with the lower self and defeat the lower self. The right. attributes of the lower self is everything they're harmed. Everything they're harmed murder, grievance, lust, greed, jealousy, envy, hatred, everything they're harmed becomes or established or is exuded through the lower self and the attributes. The higher self is most love and right. Everything in which that stands for righteousness, freedom, expansion of the mind, and so forth. That's what this all is symbolic to. This play has been played out within the within times, not just as far as the individuals on the planet, as we call the race or sex, but within one's own self. That's where the real battle takes place. And that is the great I'm a guest. That is the great jihad that Muslims and Christians speak about. All right? It's the same stuff. It has nothing to do with the next turn of war. You have to conquer your own being. The bones of the skeletons in your own closet. You have to eliminate your own baggage. You know, as I was about to say, a bad lady, you know, with bad brothers, too. You know, the elimination of as much burden or weight as possible helps you to feel cooler, helps you able to expand your mind, clean consciousness. All right? In the new encyclopedia for Canada, it says, when the serpent raised to the sixth stage, the form of God is seen. Check that out now. When the serpent raised to the sixth stage, which is the sixth chapter, the form of God is seen. But the slight veil remains. It is as if one sees a light within a lantern and thinks that the light itself can be touched, but the glass is a beam. That's what it says now. Now, this takes us to the New Testament, Luke 11, chapter 34, verse. The light of the body is the eye, just one eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body is filled with light. But when thy eye is evil, the whole body is filled with well, so these, this eye, this ring, sunbeams, all right, all of this is connected. All that is talking about, um, actually what is activated above, the pineal gland. These are uh, areas within the pineal gland that you get the book by uh, Mela Africa, in Hotel Africa. He states the same nutricide. It was on page 15. He shows you a blown up picture of a brain, the equivalent size of a car. And the hovering directly over the pineal gland is a galaxy like cloud. This galaxy like cloud looks like it's powers are like a UFO. That is your own personal new building, a net 
to your golden light. That is where the light um, extends from. That is your actual chakra. That is your uh, pineal gland chakra. All right? And when you have these particular beings in which that spreads out uh, diagonally from the top of your head to the back of your head, in the side of your head, along the sides of your ears, along the temple lobe, then as well as also from the, in between the eyebrows to the back of the head, you know, the middle of the gutter, and also from the top of the head down to the perineum. This is what is called your ethereal, or what is known as a plan of the All right? And these particular beings, they just light up this fourth eye, as it's called, or fourth eye, as it's called, in which that hovers over the pioneer's land, which gives you access in addition to, or actual records, or the universal library, or what is known as um, actual plane in that particular sense, and higher. Or the physical plane, which is the plane of force, you have your astral plane, which is your emotional plane, your mental plane, your causal plane, your spiritual plane, and also your soul plane. All right? This is soul activation now that we're talking about in the continent. Um, and this gives you access to all of the planes of existence. All right? Now, this is what is known, of course, as the coming here rule, or the Messiah or Christ, the Messiah, the Messiah, the Messiah, really these are all states of consciousness or enlightenment or enlightenment, as we refer to them all. All right? Now, so this true wing disc is in the brain. This is the actual photograph that we were talking about, which is in each side in the book. And everyone can go there if they have the book to check it out. For those who don't know who Nevedo or Nekiru is, he's one of the 42 Nekirus of the gods of my yacht. The name Nekiru means go the light of these, I'm saying. And actually, this interval, uh, Nevedo calls us the external star. C, which is known as Emiya. Right? We symbolize that mother principle again, Emiya. Right? If you go to the New York, Emiya is also one of the female goddesses of the Southern African powers. All right? Um, I'm going to start getting for spiritual information before we continue on. Is there anything that y'all want to build on? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I noticed you were talking about the uh, pineal gland and the uh, how we rise up from uh, all the way up to the spiritual world. What it sounded like what you were talking about, uh, dealing with the Kundalini chakras. Right. Well, we know that the pineal gland is the medium between out of body experience, spiritual experience, and the inner body or the physical body. So this is what gives us the ability, of course, to that's our mind's eye. That's what gives us the ability to see the physical eyes. Mm -hmm. And with this consciousness shut down at nighttime, it gives us the same consciousness, you know, when we sleep, as well as also after we pass on or pass through a very flesh. That's what many people realize. They think that it's just that that, mm -hmm. that impression that you had while you sleep in, but it is a known fact that sleep just a, was a cousin of death. So there's the mm. same thing that taken place in life. Right. Even after the past four. So go ahead. Yeah, this is what the prophet told us to focus on uh, on a continuous basis And it seems like people are now focusing On this He said we must understand the higher and lower self And this is what we should be focusing on You know Exactly exactly. Yeah. exactly. Because that how else are you going to Connect to God within our law of faith Our law in man You can't do it You know And how do you do it We know that based on um, Elizabeth And the zone of Egypt in chapter 2, it speaks about the Holy Breath. The Holy Breath is how you do it. 
it comes by way of the Holy Breath. The Holy Breath is the medium, you know, in which that unifies the lower self and the higher self and merges the lower self into the higher self to become just one self. There's no more duality, no more opposite. There is no north and south and north or west and east. Written back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's none of that any longer in that particular format because now it is just one. And you can gain mm-hmm. words and say, that is what is meant by the Elohim. The Elohim were all the creator. But there's seven Elohim, but they all go back to three and into one. That is based on the particular number formula um, method in which that you can identify you know, uh, within the Holy Command, so to speak. It's a seven, six, three, like yeah. Chinese, one. Um, so, so, I won't get into what that right there. Also the also, the seventh intelligence of uh, of right. Elohim. Right, right. Those are the seven the church. Of intelligence, exactly. Which is the same within the Book of Revelation, which is the seven chapters or the seven churches or the seven um, eyes or the seven flames or the seven candles. It's mentioned the same. You know, the um, Book of Revelation is mentioned at least three, four times about the number. Um, you know, seven. All right, so. Get a seven um, heaven. <laughs> right, yeah. seven heaven. Right, all of that is talking, I'm talking about your chocolate. That's why. Um, when we just read about the serpent being raised up into the sky and the sky is pretty much his forehead, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's what that is. Your head symbolizes the sky. That is heaven. All right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that heaven, which is the third eye or fourth eye, gives you access to the astral plane of the dream world. Nightly, as well as also after the in physical form. This is what the science is as far as being washed towards the learning disciplines, these particular principles. You know, um, many have just taken it to mean getting paperwork. And you know, paperwork is something in which that reflects, you know, um, how you mentally feel, you know, and it's a projection or an extension of how you feel. You know, mentally still. But um, spiritually, um, the work still must be done. You must still master all this stuff as being a beginner of life, being a Muslim or Muslim, being uh, one who is a child of God or a child of light. Uh, you know, we must have different principles. And we broke down several shows before. Uh, the word Muslim or Muslim is the Bible word Messiah, which means the child of God, or the child of the light, or the of light. And that's who the Quran in Quran chapter 7 speaks about. That as one of the beginnings of life, our duty is to teach the Holy God and how to harmonize, go to um, verse 18 and verse 19, how to harmonize. The lower self and the higher self, so that there's only one self, so that there's yeah. harmony and that there's mm-hmm. peace. There's harmony and peace. So that means the only way to gain internal peace and let that be a reflection of your outward existence is coming from working internal power. The inner power, it must be activated. And that comes through the black self and the self. Right? So, that's the most thing that. Right, we know that the Empire Washington, um, the Washington Prophets is called a system of particular states, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Minnesota, Nebraska, Colorado, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, uh, Alabama, Utah, Texas, New Mexico, Florida, portions of and even of what we now call the thirteen colonies, you know. Um, actually, all the way up into almost the whole of Canada, 
that was actually what we would say actually three fourths more, three fourths of North America. Actually, that is Washington Park. And we actually doubled over 30 million acres in North America alone at one time. You know? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, the Empress, if anybody um, ever reads the book, my book, I remember Sipla, um, the first one of water, you will see in there the grant. You will see in there um, the um, particular cases. As a matter of fact, um, we will tell you now how all of this came about. We were dealing with the Empire Washington because at the moment. Um, you know that, you know, we all sent this up to the Shire. Um, the Kushite Empire, the Songhai Malian Empire, which is the old man, all of that is one of the same, and the Ultima Empire, which is the Moroccan Empire, all of that is the same thing. That's why it's called the Empire of Washington Deep Back Domain, because it's, that's what it is. And the Washington is also Choctaw, all right? Um, a staff tool, uh, which actually is where you get the uh, tribe of Shabazz from. So the tribe of Shabazz, Choctaw, um, the Washington, all that is one in the same. Wow. Right, but, okay. mm-hmm. Now, wow. what happens is that the empire laid claims to the following <laughs> land by bloodline. This is important now because it's through bloodline. Yes, it is. The urban state, the urban state, the state, also known as the Imperial International State of the Virgin Hasburg Empire, it included, now check this out, it included the Western Europe, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Germany, Italy, Sicily, Naples, Sardinia, Spain, and Portugal, as well as most of North America and the Caribbean, Additionally, the Central and South America, in all of North America, west of the Imperial demarcation line of 1713, or the British Royal Proclamation line of 1763. This is a breakdown of the Royal Imperial bloodline of the Washington Chemical Moors. In other words, they ran through all of Europe and controlled Europe at one time. And this is the UK, um Video by my man, Master Chuck, uh, Master, uh, True Master. Um, he did actually, he actually did um, several videos on the Hasbro um, lineage. And he will show you in his information how these are more. All right? And so, so that's. Uh, down, oh, come on. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, you said the Hasbro uh, dynasty was part of the. Or what they call the black nobility of Europe. Exactly, exactly, exactly. One of the same. Yeah, it was, I, I, all just, right, right. I didn't know it was so all that see, connected. Yeah, like exactly. the movie Black Knight with Martin Lawrence. Exactly, yes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, this is also what we know is that this breakdown of the Royal Imperial Bloodline for the Washington Chemical Moors. It says that the, um, the young heir of the French throne, um, King Louis XVII, married the young heiress of the Washington Seneca throne, um, Annie Maria. Now, their imperial marriage would become official in 1795, persuading to the conveyance of the Spanish land grant. Now, check this out. Go back to the movie, Celestine Prophecy. Hmm. All right, written by James Redfield is a book, but go and look at the movie. Within 15 minutes of the movie, two white guys are riding down along the side of a mountain in Peru. Beautiful, mm. all right, and beautiful um, off in the distance. And the guy, the passenger, comes out of nowhere and asks, um, sorry, but says, well, how did your um, um, girl acquire the land? And he says, oh, the Lord gave it to us for a land grab. Hmm. Hmm. Right in the movie. Right in the movie. Wow. Because minutes of the movie. Just go and see it. Celestine What's the name Foxy. of it? Celestine Prophecy. C-E-L-E-S-T-I-N-T. Celestine Prophecy. 
Okay. Try to check okay. it out. So, yeah, you got to check it out because that is the plan to the conveyance of the Spanish land grant. The so the Ponder young heir, King Louis the, um, the 17th, and his wife, Eric, um Anna Maria. Now, these two would also received the Imperial Spanish Land Grant of 1763. And as the recipients, both the 1762 and the 1795 Spanish Land Grant, check this out, King Louis XVII became known as the Marquis de Maison Rouge, owner of Louisiana and Florida. Okay? Now, anybody in history would tell you that the Louisiana Purchase that was never purchased. I'll get to that in a second. Because the Empress spoke about it in an article, and I'm going to get to her article. But it says, upon the death of Anna Maria and King Louis XVII, the title of Louisiana, Delphine and Royal um, Regent, as we put the Royal Regent on the Marquis de Maison Rouge, was conveyed to the next line to the Imperial French line or crown, and that was Louis Francis Joseph D. Bourbon. Now, y'all know the Bourbon Street, that is one of the streets on which that, um, the Mardi Gras is still um, done yeah. in, uh, in New Orleans. But it says Prince D. Conti, that was, now he was born 1734 through 1814, and he was the son of Francis, of um, Louis Francis D. Bourbon. All right, Prince Conti, 1774. 1776, and then you have the daughter of Anna Maria and King Louis XVII married Louis Francis Joseph Bourbon, Prince de Conti, and as the second Marquis de Maison Rouge, Louis Francis Joseph de Bourbon became the recipient of both the Imperial Spanish Land Grants of 1762 and the Spanish Land Grants of Monroe, Louisiana. Now, um, with the death of Joseph D. Bourbon, the eldest son, Henry Joseph Turner, inherited the Mason Rouge um, estate. Now they turned the name Turner. All right, they changed the name Turner from Tunica, which is the native um, tribe. Tunica is the native tribe of the Americans. That's the actual name is Tunica, because they wore tunics, which is head wraps or. Uh, they wore um, turban. All right? No. Oh. That's how they got their name, Tunica, because they wore turban. All right? These are, and this is where um, you had to, and if you see Cherokee, uh, you see any pictures of the Cherokee, you see some of them wearing turbans. All right? I'm part of the five of our South members, five of them, Choctaw, which is Washtaw, Creek, Muscogee, Chickasaw, Seminole, and as well as also uh, Cherokee. Those are the five civilized tribes. All of them is connected and interrelated because you have the Camp Holmes Treaty or the Treaty of Camp Holmes in which that showed that all of these nations combined and it was called the Wichita Nation or the Wichita Nation. All right, it's right in this document in the first paragraph. Now, it says from Joseph, from Henry Joseph Turner, a Turner married Sarah Turner, or Turner, and from this union came their eldest son, Joseph Henry Turner, before Mason D. Mason Rouge. Now, this is the thing. We get to Prophet Nova Dwali. And you, of course, you would get this information from some of the ancient ones, written by um, Her Highness the Empress Washington of Bertiati, Washington Gaston, trying to help back. Um, but what she says, the book, you would see that Prophet Nobis Ali being the son, all right, as we go here, it says Frederick Houston Washington, regent of the Empire Washington of the Monday, married Annie Frank Turner, the recipient of the 1762 and 70 
1795 Spanish name. And the heirs of the Henry Joseph Turner estate. This is why when you get the court document, the United States Supreme Court cannot and have not ruled against the Washington in this reform and opposed to the decisions of 1848 and 1850 and also from 1992. All right, and we have proved that what they call the Louisiana Purchase never was purchased and that it was never sold and that these land grants still show forth the original owners of this land. This is what it says, is that the eldest daughter of Frederick and Frankie is the current imperial empress of the Washington, which is Bertiasi Sierra of Washington, or Washington. And Bertiasi married John Gaston, the son of Corella Turner. Now, for those who don't know who Corella is, she's the daughter of Eliza Turner, which Eliza Turner is the mother of Prophet of Bali. So Corella yeah. and Prophet of Bali are brothers and sisters. Right, and Eliza is the daughter of Sarah Turner and Henry Joseph Turner, and John Gaston became the sixth um, Marquis de Maison Rouge after Noble Dali, who had been the fifth Marquis de Maison Rouge. Right, this is how Prophet Noble Dali was able to go to Havana, Cuba, and show that he was over the Moorish territory. Of course, many temples speaks about the vast estate, but they can't explain it because they choose not to go in this direction and get the information and prove and show what was being shown forth in that 1928 Pan American Conference. Remember, these particular notes were hidden and are hidden, and no one I know of is known. But we don't need the notes when we understand that. Prophet Nobu Dali is the fifth Marquis of the Mason de Rouge. In other words, he's the royal In other words, he's the prince of the Washington Prophet. In other words, of all the land called the Louisiana Purchase, which is more than three fourths, as he stated, which is 30 acres, I'm sorry, 30 million acres, he was over that. And remember, we showed you not just portions of North America, but also Central America, the adjoining islands, which is Caribbean, and it was also South America, and we also showed you, and I told you, about the land in which I've connected even in Western Europe, in which that was part of the land grant, the Spanish so-called land grant, or the same Portugal holiday. Even today, okay, is land in Spain in which that the Spanish government is waiting for the more to claim. And it comes by way of the Spanish land grant. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I so think it's a puzzle. <laughs> yes, actually, actually, uh, uh, Prophet Noble Drew Ali was a Washita Moor. Right. Exactly. Uh, through and through. And how you know? we right. And so we know that Timothy Jew or Prophet of the Valley was Prince, a fifth regent, royal regent, or Mason D. Mason Rouge, by and through his mother Eliza, a daughter of Sarah Tonica and Henry Joseph Turner. Now, Eliza Turner married John um, Drew Kitman, and Kitman, of course, is Kilwa, which is the Cherokee, one of the five Cherokee names. And his name was John Drew. Now, according to the oral statements and prophecies of Prophet Nova Dali, this is what he says. I am the fifth in the last prophet, and I am five times more powerful than I was before. Now, why did he say I'm the fifth in the last prophet, and I am five times more powerful than I was before? Because it symbolizes him being the fifth royal regent Marquis de Maison Rouge, or mm. the royal mm. prince mm. of the proper, mm. of the Washington proper. Yeah, missing piece to the puzzle. Yes, sir. That's the piece of the puzzle. The reason why Noble Dali is referred to as a proper because he had land, the land of milk and honey, cannon to take us 
Balsarians, known as the Israelites, all right, to, unlike the allegorical fictitious character, Moses, whose story is based on Amenhotep IV, or Akhenaten, or Unconscious, we know that um, it is also said that, um, based on Brother A.Y. Bay, as um, Grand National's secretary, he said that, Prophet Brother, he said, I didn't tell anyone who I was born at and who my parents were because I did not want the people to make a shrine out of out of the place or make over my parents like they did, like they done with Joseph and Mary. And of course, he's talking about his mm-hmm. mom and Elijah Turner and John Drew um, or Cherokee, um, who was full, um, his father was full blooded Cherokee, with Dr. Mm-hmm. Chohar, which is right there out of Clinton, North Carolina, Sampson County. And his mom was um, pure blooded Washington or Tunica, right there out of um, Louisiana. This is why they say that he was raised up on the Cherokee Reservation um, in North Carolina. Born 1886. January the 8th. Right. That comes through the royal bloodline. So that's what he was saying. Now, if you read the documentation by the United States versus the Turner heirs, you see something very fascinating. Because in the particular documents, I'm going to read this to you. It says, Sarah Turner, Eliza Turner, Andy Turner, and George W. Turner are the true and lawful owners of and have good title against the United States. That's what it says. The defendants mm. in and to all the land, to all the land, and heredament claimed by them in their Wade petition, which lands are described as follows on a map of survey executed on 27 March 1820. All right? And this is what huh? it says land on both sides of the said river, Washita. Wow. All right? And within the track numbers, one and two of the said grant and survey. Now, how much land was this is the small amount was the 68,883 acres of land. That's the small amount. But it ranged over to 30 million acres. Right from out of Louisiana, spread it into a V all the way across the states, all the way up into almost the whole of Canada. Now, hmm. Eliza Turner and John Drew Kitman or Kitman, they played an important role in the um, in our heritage because it was part of the landmark case of the free woman and man, also referred to in law, all right, um, as this, you know, as the free um, man or free man, all right. Right. Of course, you know, later on that the so-called free man bureau and all that other stuff, but they state that they won back the 68,883 acres of land in Louisiana, which is the mid to northern portion of Louisiana. With the court case of the United States versus the heirs of Henry Turner, case 32 by Henry, um, by heirs of Henry, called the heirs of Henry Turner versus the United States, case 191 in 1848. In other words, in these two cases, this is what it says, June 6, 1848, a Supreme Court Decision read by B. O. H. McLeod, um, McLeod, who was the judge, declared that the United States does not own the land of the ancient one, the mound builders of North America. Right? It goes on. The moors of the title holding. The titles are actually your name, the El, the Bay, the Day, the Al, and Ali. Translated into the five civilized tribes. This is why they keep trying to get all these white folks up into stealing your birthright. This is why you see all these white folks keep Chickasaw Creek, Muskogee, and Choctaw in the seminar. Mm-hmm. Also, the court declared mm-hmm. that the lawful landowners or the heirs of the Henry Turner 
A series of congressional bills, acts, and the United States court cases reaffirmed national sovereignty for the heirs of Henry Turner v. Bourbon, and the claim has been recorded before the World Court at The Hague in 1996. That since the Treaty of Urrech, 1713, in which that the Spanish v. Bourbon had established themselves as the protectorate of land known as the Florida on behalf of the Empire Washington D. Douglas Dominion, here are two United States Supreme Court cases in which that the Washington won, and that is Supreme, S-U-P-R-E-M-E dot Justia, J-U-S-T-I-A dot com, C-O-M, right slash, U-S, that's U-S, right slash, five, two, right slash, six, six, three, right slash. And here's the other one, Supreme, once again, dot Justia, J-U-S-T-I-A dot com, right slash U.S., right slash 44, right slash 77 or 773, right slash case, C-A-S-E dot H-T-M-F. The United States court or Supreme Court found that the neutral strip, which is over nearly 3 million acres approximately, right, um, and that's not including um, 27 million more acres in Canada. This is just within the United States, three million. And the other territories of the land were definitely not part of the territory ceded to the United States. So the United States was never ceded that property by any means whatsoever. Matter of fact, the Department of Transportation in 1940, um, in 1992, um, um, showed that 68,000 acres of land by the State Department land grant 923. Uh, right slash 1991 designated Washington proper and that Washington terror included the floor. This is documentation in the, in the National Archives of Washington, D.C. And mostly that confirms the mound builders. All right. Now, the United States has recognized the Empire Washington D.C. as indigenous people of North America and has under, right. has under consideration in the 105th Congress, H.R. Number 260, all right, um, the Guadalupe and the High Delivery Treaty Claims Act of January 1997, all right? So when people ask, is there any documentation yet, 1996, 1997, 1992, all of this was done by the Empress. And as a matter of fact, um, let me read this article before we continue on because she busts a hole in this is what she says. Hmm. And they have not been able to come back yet in order to verify this. She said the Empress, the Empress says their land was never included in any land bill that is um, it, that it was not part of the Louisiana Purchase when it sold to Spain to France. Nor was it bought in 1803 when France rolled it over to the United States. Of hmm. She right. President Thomas Jefferson was well aware of the fraud of the fraud in the land deal and stated his sentiments at the time. In truth, land spoken of has never been part of the United States of America. It's always belonged to the ancient ones. It sounds like the same land President Abraham Lincoln is going to return to the Moors after slavery. He called it the Egypt of the West. And mm. or did now, now go back and watch the movie. Check it out now. Go back and watch the movie. Um... Uh, what's the name of National Treasures? Okay. Go back to that. Uh, what was that? National Treasures. National Treasures. Part oh, okay. 2. Watch part 1 is good, but part 2 um, shows you how all this land actually was ours. Part 2. And they show you the OMEC spaces in the City of Gold. They're found under Mount Rushmore, which is in where? Rushmore. Rushmore. Right, exactly. Right, where's where's Mount Rushmore located at? Anyone? Mount Rushmore? Right, where's Mount Rushmore located at? Yeah, that's where all the dead presidents are. uh, Right. uh, Right. But 
we know that it's located where it lives in the Dakota, right? Yeah. All right. So this is what it goes on to say. He called it the Egypt of the West or Central America, the land between the Rockies and the Allegheny. All right? From the Gulf of Mexico up into Canada on both sides of the Mississippi. In 1848, the Washita, also called the Oshita, and the Tonica nations took their land case before the United States Supreme Court and won their case under Judge Tanny. The same judge in 1856 gave his opinion, which was not a legal decision, in a tragic Red Scott case because he came in there um, as Negro, black and color. Exactly. Yeah. Coming in proper persona to jury, which basically stated that there is nothing a black man has that a white man is bound to respect. The result of this opinion meant further slavery and death to the Washington Trinity and other nations. It was murdered by the tens of thousands enslaved and ran off their land. Their names were changed to hide the truth of their history. The Washington became Washington and the Trinity became Turner, a term. All right? This is what she says in the article. Now, the Washington D.C. the money more than listed at the United Nations under the indigenous project. They didn't know or renamed the indigenous people's organization number 21593, meaning that the seat number for the Washington at the United Nations was 215, and it became effective in the year of 1993. According to international law, the Washington has established itself as a sovereign independent nation, right? This United Nations NIS-21. Right slash five nine three, which is apart from the corporate union of seventeen eighty one and the corporate United States of seventeen eighty seven. The land claim of the Washington has been affirmed by Spain and France as well as Britain pursuant to the Spanish land grants of seventeen sixty two and seventeen ninety five. Washington deducted among the more maybe or uh, maybe nine US citizens. Um all right to be non-U.S. citizens, right, nationals, but not United States citizens, which is corporation, and that is found within the Dred Scott case versus Sam. So, um, that is what is going on. Um, I'm going to get to more of it in a second here, but I definitely want some opinions on what, what y'all think. Uh, it's just great. I mean, think about it. I mean, you know, the, the, the Washington has a seat in the U.N. And this is what El Hajj Malik Shabazz was talking about, taking our case to the U.N., you know. Right. But you can't but you can't do that, uh, you know, with the improper status. You know, you must proclaim your Moors nationality. Right. And, you know, that's how the human rights uh, will, uh, you know, apply to us. You know, we all have human rights, but as a um, 14 Amendment citizen, you know, it does not apply to you, you know, to be respected. And this is what they were talking about in the Dred Scott case. How can a black man or de nationalized more be respected? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And see, that's something which that we have to come to the conclusion of. I went to the Afrocentristic movement myself. I mean, as I got into the definition, I read Dr. Ben John Henry talk, uh, you know, uh, trick up the off, you know, the off, you know, I, I mean, John T. Jackson, according to Wilson, I, I've read everybody, you know, hundreds and thousands of books, but mm -hmm. I knew there was stuff in which I was still missing. I understood that, you know, and there was keys on which I was given, such as the, the miseducation of the Negro by Carter G. Wilson. He states in that many of us have never even been to Africa, and that actually many of us are not even African. And he says this in the book. Now, I went back and had to go back and reread his book in order to pick that up. Hmm. And I understood what he meant by that once I went back and reread it. He was saying that we were indigenously from here already. Yeah, and, and going back to El Hajj Malik Shabazz, you know, which they call Malcolm X, 
Um, he said, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. So if the rock landed on you, you must have been standing there when it landed. Exactly. I wonder if they picked that up. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it. You know, but I mean, I mean, that's the reason why we're holding this for the for people can pick it up and you know come into realization and stuff that the new nationality will need to be tied to land mass. You know, you can't continue being stateless or ID landless. You know, hence having no nationality. That is something that we said you can't continue doing. You know, you can't form a nation and which is based on some type of protection. You know, if you know if you're not in proper status or in proper standing, you know, if you're just, you know, um, dealing with things from just that particular aspect of just, you know, Negro, black, and colored or labels, you know, then and you're fine with being listed as an advocate because that's what those actually are, or being listed as colorable, colorable law, which is a guise or disguise of a real law, which is the jail law. And you never be in respect of law, then I mean that is a choice. You know. Mm. But you know that as the brother said, of course the memo was never fully ratified. You know, mm-hmm. you know that the just I think, even though it was just a mere opinion, still holds they in thirty days. They have, they still teach this particular law case in law school. And they're trying to give you the understanding that the names of the black and colors are Adjectives or labels in which that is used in order to be nationalize individuals. That's why it's on the birth certificate, which is which they bond. With it being on your birth certificate or being tied into a computer database that you are, um, particular things about you correcting that any shape, form, or level, you know, uh, this is why they say they have an affidavit or affidavits put on the register of these and the record. So that you have something in order to counteract what they put on the record, which is the first of the which there was no problem. So you want your baptismal records or live telephone form also showing, well, uh, that's the explanation show. I'm not really bobo. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm Mustafa um, on deck. All right. Mm-hmm. I've come back to I've come back to the knowledge of that the name in which that last room is Western Empire, which was the ultimate empire, which is the Moroccan Empire, as it was called, which is actually song, I Mali and with the old man called the Kushai Empire. All of it is the same thing known as the Empire washed over that the name. Now those. So once I understand, understand, understand that then that's where really all these pieces of this puzzle will come more together and start to judge. But as long as we have people who are, you know, constantly trying to fight that information, you know, just because they have an agenda of their own or they just want to, you know, memorize and quote Prophet Nova Jali in just one aspect, then it's not something that we say is going to come together. It's not something that we say is going to be unified because they choose not to see the pieces of the puzzle. We're not here to do that. In the more holy simple science of the world, we are here in order to put the pieces of this puzzle together so that we can have more of a clarity on where we need to, to move as a people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, really, what you just went over, you really explained who the prophet really is. Oh, no right. doubt. That's a, you know, and, and, and which traces the royal bloodline. Oh, yeah. You know, right. you get those, yeah, and the empress did a perfect job of documenting everything because she's related to the prophet. So, you know, this is the missing piece, and if not, the, the main piece. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, yeah. to, see the, to see the full picture, you know? See, uh, uh, somebody say, so if I... Are just quoting and saying that we have a vast estate, and most people don't know what it is, or they're just going to quote chapter 47 or what the case is, but they don't understand what it really is. Exactly. You know, how we yeah. use the government, 
and how it is still under these names from the last Ultimate Empire, which is the last empire or the last Western Empire. That's what we were. We, we have the remnants of this last Western Empire. And this is found in the definition of amorality and what is also within the definition of pursuit of law, pursuit of court. When you look those two words up, amorality and pursuit of court, you will see that it says um, in amorality, the last Western Empire. Now, amorality was brought forth after the shutdown of the consumer court, mm-hmm. after the, of the um, abolishment of the last Western Empire. Now, you look at the last Western Empire, and then you go to Kusula, it brings the word Morocco. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, in the fourth law, this is the Black Law Dictionary, fourth edition, the luck. Mm. So, the last Western Empire was Morocco. This means it was here. It just didn't yeah. come from out of Africa. We did import and export trading among South Africa. All right? And this is um, showing. We read this information um, last week. We went over this information. And I'm mm-hmm. going to make mention of it again. Um, there's some good books in which that we can get. What They Never Told You in History Class by Indo Kim Kush. Another good book is... Um, the Missing Pages of History by Indo Kenneth Kutch. All right? Now, let me, let me come down so we can get, get into mm-hmm. that info right quick because you may mention it just last week, and I want to make sure that everybody is getting proper understanding, overstanding, understanding of this. Now, this is coming from John G. Jackson. But before I get to him, no, let's let's go to John Henry Clark. Because we have a lot of Afrocentristic brothers and sisters who love quoting John Henry Clark, but when it comes to this information that I'm going over, they they fail to quote him on this. So we want mm-hmm. to make sure that he's quoted properly. All right. Um, it's called African Christopher Columbus and the Myth of the New World. Check out what he says now. It must also be added that Amerigo Vespucci on his voyage to the Americas witnessed the Mandingos of Mali with the Omex and the Songhai Empire, later identified as the Moroccan Empire. Oh, I think there's some. Yeah, yeah, out in the Atlantic, returning to Africa. Hold up now. Hold, hold, hold. Hold up. Hold up. God damn. <laughs> this is John Henry Clark now. This is John Henry Clark. Mm. And his African, Christopher Columbus, and the myth of the new world. These are the myths he's breaking down here, y'all. He, he just destroyed that myth that y'all think that Morocco is the kingdom of Africa. Just being after. No, we're talking about the empire. And he says who this is. He says it must be added that Americo Vespucci on his voyage to the Americas witnessed the Man Mali, which is the Omex, and the Songhai Empire, which is the Songhai Mali Empire, both of them together, later identified as the Moroccan Empire. Out in the mm. Atlantic. What is, what is the damn Moroccan Empire doing out in the Atlantic? <laughs> returning to Africa. Oh, mm. now he says returning to Africa. What the hell was they doing out in the, in the Atlantic, returning to Africa? Where was they at? <laughs> hmm. um, they were the Rock Empire. Empire. All right, but go to chapter 47. Go to chapter 47 <laughs> in the Holy Quran. Who got chapter 47? You got your um, Holy Quran, Uncle Seven there, brother? Yes, um, sir. Um, brother, brother, yes, Al, you got it. Put, put 47. For me. Go, go to chapter 47 for me. Chapter 47. Let me see if I get it right here right quick. Uh, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, here I got it, 47, Egypt, the capital right. empire of the dominion of Africa. Right. Uh, go the down inhabitants, to talk about the Moroccan empire. Yeah, the, 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 the inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanite from the land of Canaan. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, see here, read the rest. Turn this page, okay? Uh, old man Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa, who came from the land of Canaan. Uh, three, his father Ham and his family were second. Then came the word Ethiopia, which means the demarcation line of the dominion of Amexum. Um, the first true and divine name of Africa, the dividing of the land between the Father and the Son. <laughs> the dominion of Cush, northeast and southeast Africa, and northwest and southwest was the, his father's dominion of Africa. Paragraph 5. And mm-hmm. later years, many of their brethren from Asia and the Holy Lands joined them. Paragraph 6, the Moabites from the land of Moab who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit northwest Africa. They were the founders and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire with the Canaanite, Hittite, Emirate brethren who sojourned from the land of Canaan seeking new homes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they were seeking new homes. So they was out in the Atlantic seeking new homes. Huh. Mm-hmm. That's what it oh. says. <laughs> oh, okay. So they was yeah. out in the Atlantic seeking new homes. Continue reading, brother. Okay, uh, paragraph seven. Their dominion and inhabitation extended from northeast and southwest Africa across mm-hmm. the Great Atlantis even Uh-oh. into the present North, South, and Central America, and also oh, Mexico God. and the Atlantis Islands before the great earthquake, which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. Exactly. Mm. When the land was connected. Yes, sir. Exactly. John Henry Clark just verified the Africans, who was the Mandingos of Mali, who's the Omex, the Songhai Empire, who later became known or identified as the Moroccan Empire, how they was out in the Atlantic returning to Africa, and as you just finished reading, Prophet Nobujali verifies that, in which that states that not only were they out in the Atlantic, they show you where the home in which they, they connected with, which was North, Central, and South, particularly <laughs> in Mexico. Who was that in the Mexico region? They're known as the Omecans. Hence the term Omexum. That's where the wow. word of Mexican comes from. It's from the Omex, who were not just in Africa, hence you get the word Omexum, but also here in the Americas you get the word Omexum. From the Omex, the Mandingos, the Mandingos of the Malian and the Songhai Empires. It goes mm-hmm. on in the article of African Explorers of the New World, Henry G. Lawrence states this. We can now positively state that the Mandingos of Mali and the Songhai Empire and possibly other Africans, check this out, and possibly other Africans crossed the Atlantic to carry on trade with the Western Hemisphere Indians and further succeeded in establishing colonies throughout the Americas. What did he say? Here's the reason why Prophet Nobujali <laughs> would tell you within the oral um, statements and prophecies that along the Mississippi, he seen more, um, there was um, more up and down the Mississippi before the arrival of the Europeans. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, what the Hemisphere Indians, what he isn't saying is that actually we just said before them, in which that is verified through um, quite a bit of other information. All right. But this is um, what we're going over tonight. If there's anything else that you want to add on to as far as what we just said in the Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Yes. Uh... I've almost forgotten to tell you, yes, uh, I had a hard time uh, getting this uh, portrait uh, from my mother because it's our family, uh, from our family archives. And I'm going to take the picture with the portrait tomorrow at his uh, a studio. It's what my great-great-grandmother, uh, it's a 19th century portrait of her. She's a, uh, she, uh, I've been told by all the family, all the elders of my family that she is a Choctaw. And uh, Choctaw, and uh, I, 
Yes, sir. Choctaw. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm more I'm more familiar. I'm more affiliated with the Watchdog than I thought. So right. uh, when I get that picture, I'm definitely sending you a copy, brother. You're about to leave. Right. Right. Send it to you. Yes, sir. Yeah, that. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, a nineteenth century portrait, and uh, the photographer asked me that I wanted to take it out of the frame. I said, "No, this is a nineteenth century portrait." Uh, and my mother was saying, "No, we can't let the air hit that picture because you know, it's so old." You know, we talk, we talking post Civil War era here. You know, right. so uh, yeah, she's dressed up in European uh, clothing. Uh, you can tell she did, uh, uh, the so-called Native American Indian features, and she also has Moorish features as well. Uh, but I will send you a picture and uh, okay. talk to you about it and see what you think of it. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Brother Olabama, yeah. you have anything to add on before we get up off of here? Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> they coming out with uh, the Long Ranger. Uh, oh, yeah. Of course, they're going to, yeah, and they're definitely trying to distort the image of what the indigenous people look like. I think mm-hmm. Johnny Depp exactly. is playing Tonto, which oh. means fool oh. or idiot. Oh. Uh, so, they, you know, they're going to distort the image. I mean, think about it. They could have picked any movie to make. Why this particular one? You know, exactly. at this at this present time, um. And just what the brother brother L, uh, the Grand Sheik was was saying, his 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 family is connected. So I mean, think about it. Well, do you look like Johnny Depp? <laughs> no. <laughs> no you know, way so, so you could audition for that role. Exactly. Uh, so you know. So of course they're going to distort the image again. You know, so people could not not identify and have that connection. You know, and yeah. I was just reading on Facebook today, um, and a, and a woman was saying about how we need to move to Africa, but from what you just went over and what the pop prophet revealed, uh, we already home. So hey, we we identify with that side as well as this side. I mean, and, and according to that land grant, we even have claims to parts of Europe as well, because we didn't even discuss that part. Uh huh. You know, we yeah, didn't even discuss that. Yes, sir. Well, I did. You know. I did. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, you did. Um, you, yeah, you did. Right. But I mean, but right. think about I, I, that I, I though. I don't think so. Exactly. I didn't go into that exactly. But that's yeah. in the Hasbro. Um, um, yeah. I want people yeah. to know you did research. Exactly. Exactly. That's some, deep, that's some deep stuff here. That was, that's the oh, black yeah. nobility of Europe. You know, and I'm, yeah. I'm like, wow. You know, <laughs> we stretch that far? <laughs> Man. That land, them land grants cover a lot of ground, oh, you yes, know? Sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, we can't throw that piece, this piece of the puzzle out. This is a very important piece. Exactly, yeah. Can't do it. No. Nope. You won't never understand what the prophet was really trying to say. Exactly. You know, and I think about these temples, and they read the Circle Seven all the time, and and during the meetings, and and, and they, they they never discuss this part, Chapter Forty Seven. Yeah. Right. And he talked about uh, his family and his mother, uh, and he said that he didn't want. Uh, you know, for people to really know the details surrounding her, because think about it, if you understood who she really uh, was, and understood, you would have understood that she was of royalty. So, I mean, think about it. You know, he he, he knew how you would react to that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's right yes, there in the oral statements. I know just what, what you what you was talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know. So I I I was really amazed at the first time I was told that that my great great grandmother was Choctaw, 
And I'm like, huh? I said, no, no. You know what? Wait, 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 wait. He said, she's what? She is Chakata. And uh, when I look at the portrait, I'm like, because when I was a young boy, I always said she looked like, at that time, I always said she looked like an Indian. And my grandmother said, she, well, she is. I said, oh, you know, that's all I thought about it at that time. You know, but now, you know, it shows me how much we are linked to the Choctaw and uh, also to the Washita, more than I thought I was. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. so that back up a lot of things oh. that three of us were talking right. about that's tonight. That's right, that's right. But, I mean, but we got to think about it. Um. Why else would there be an urge for us? There has to be something, some type of DNA explosion, some type of ancestral voice or connection in which that is leading us to particular information and manifestation. Uh-huh. You know, I remember at 11, I was walking out of my um, bedroom at my grandmother's house, and I was thinking about slavery, and I was thinking about lynching and, and castrations and all that stuff, and the voice just popped out of nowhere in my head and said, what if he was already here? Mm-hmm. And I never denied that voice because that voice is just, I mean, that, it was just as clear as day. The voice was just as clear as I don't know what. What if he was already here? So there was <laughs> already something within me as it is within each and every one of us in which that is leading us to down this path, you know, of correcting this misinformation which that we've been taught. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And this is why we've been put in these positions is to get the information out. Yeah, the yeah. there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not coincidence neither. It's not coincidental. No. Uh-huh. It's not coincidental. I had uh I had uh connected to, to Dr. Eileen and and being mm-hmm. uh processed into the Washita Nation with my papers and my nationality and birthright papers. That's not a coincidence. The next thing I found right. out, my great great grandmother's a Choctaw. You know, exactly. you know what? You know, exactly. Huh. Right. Yeah. So that's the sign of an of an ancestry voice moving through your veins, moving through your bloodline. That's what they can't stop. They can't stop bloodline. They can't. So they know no. that blood or plasma is message. That's why they have plasma TV. You know, it's because mm-hmm. it symbolizes being able to translate messages or message codes. This is why they use plasma TV. The same thing with you. Your blood has plasma to translate message codes or messages. You know, that's how it works. It works through the plasma. It's through your bloodline. So you can't deny that. There's nothing you can do. That's right. It's always going to come out. always going to know, um, know the truth. Yes, sir. Hmm. Wow. And same with my family. I met my cousin walking to uh, walking downtown Brooklyn, and she was talking about, "Hey, you know, I used to get teased in school that I, you know, I'm an Indian, I'm Indian, I'm Indian in my family, and, and and I got a family member that traced um, our family tree and found out that we are Indians." Uh-huh. But in my mind, Boy. I knew we we are Moors. Because I, you know, I've right. been studying, so I'm like, okay, you All just, right. you just did, you just, you just verified it, you know, All you right. just verified right there, you know, because, uh, you know, yeah, now I, I asked my grandfather, yeah, I asked my grandfather, <laughs> I asked my grandfather, I said, uh, uh, did, did we ever find out, like, have ever been told that we got Indian in our family? He said, yeah, yeah, they did say that, yeah, they, they did say that, you know, but. Come to find out, on my grandfather's side, he, either his father or his father's father has Indian on on their birth certificate, and that's what my oh. cousin was talking about. So of course, that's a misnomer because we're Moors, but that just verify everything. Yes, sir. It sure does, without a doubt. You know, so yeah. We all bloodline. Yeah. Well, ain't no doubt about it, brother. Yes, sir. We all Moors. Oh, no doubt about it. No (laughs) (laughs) No, if and much about it, brother. 
Yeah. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. Yeah, exactly. 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 All right. Um, any closing remarks? Anything else? Before um, we go. Uh, yes, sir. All I got. All I can say is that's love, peace, and honor to both of you. I, I, I haven't met the other brother yet. I have met you with either Eileen person, but uh, I, I, I mean that from the heart. I appreciate that, brother. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, no doubt. Appreciate you, brother Olabala, you know, coming on. Well, you know, um, yeah, you know I yeah. appreciate you. You know I I love you, brother. Yes, sir. You know I love I love the princes as well, and uh, I just love all my family members. And all I can say as my closing remark is study, study, study. Yes, sir. Well. <laughs> study some more. <laughs> and some more. Well. No, no doubt. And when you finish studying, you will ask what to study again. I will say yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Under, you understand the higher and lower self, like the prophet That's told it. us to do, and, and transcend the ego. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>